Hi, my name is Fede, and for the past eight years I've traveled the world, witnessing firsthand the effects of climate change, the collective endeavor of activists, and the inability of world leaders to address the most pressing issue of our time, one that could lead to a catastrophic collapse of most life on Earth. Now I'm on a mission to find a solution. Ah, the Earth. Isn't it beautiful? It's our planet, and our only home. It's old, four and a half billion years. And we've been here, what? Maybe a hundred thousand. The blink of an eye. And for the longest time, we just struggled to survive and to adapt. And then something changed. Mechanized farming, electricity, cities, space shuttles. Suddenly our major preoccupation wasn't running away from wild beasts or taking refuge from the elements and pretty much everything else that wanted to kill us. Instead, we could focus on more interesting things like creating a theory of space and time, discovering the code of life and watching Hayao Miyazaki's animated films. And for a time, it was good. Yeah, just one little problem. We built pretty much everything thanks to this and that's not very good. It has consequences. In just 100 years, the oceans rose this much, which is a big deal. And the rate in the last decade is doubled what it was in the last century. Temperatures have been steadily increasing. The warmest years since we have reliable data were practically all in the past decade. And 2016 was the warmest year ever. Then there are other nice things like the shrinking of ice sheets, ocean acidification, heat waves, wildfires, hurricanes, droughts, famines, epidemics. I could go on, but we're having way too much fun. NASA developed an amazing interactive tool to visualize the effects climate change already had in the world today. Here is the short version. The climate is changing, and after controlling for variables, we are the cause. Now, how do we fix it? Well, as you can imagine, it's complicated. The Earth has a very thin layer of atmosphere, like the skin on an apple. And in the atmosphere, there are a bunch of different gases, for example, methane and carbon dioxide. Imagine this snow globe as the Earth. The snowflakes are CO2 and methane and other greenhouse gases. Now, over the past 250 years, we've released an incredible amount of these particles in the atmosphere and they jiggle around and they move. And as they do so, they absorb a lot of sunlight. They get excited. And this warms up the Earth. Hello, and welcome to the Earth's global climate control system. This might not be quite what you expected, but I can assure you that it works. These two knobs control everything and they exist in a very delicate balance. Disrupting this balance might lead the system to a catastrophic collapse and we along with it. Light and heat. Over the past 250 years we have turned this knob way, way, way too high. In 1750 the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere was about 280 parts per million, meaning that for every million molecules in the air, 280 were carbon dioxide. Now, that's the ideal number that we should strive for. Unfortunately, going back to that level is almost impossible at this point in a short amount of time. So scientists have tried to find a more manageable compromise. Climatologist Jim Hansen had his team at NASA do a study to figure out 
How much carbon in the atmosphere was too much? The paper they published, maybe the most important scientific paper of the millennia to date, said, we now know enough to know how much is too much. Any value for carbon in the atmosphere greater than 350 parts per million is not compatible with the planet on which civilization developed and to which life on Earth is adapted. That's pretty strong language for scientists to use. Unfortunately, we did not follow through. In 2016, we have exceeded 400 parts per million, which is not good. It's beyond the turning point. So now, climate change is inevitable. In fact, it's already happening. All we can do is try to reduce it and manage it. Now, there are some proposals to try to stabilize at uh, 450, perhaps even 500 parts per million, but those are not good numbers they would bring pretty disastrous consequences for life on Earth. But let's say that we somehow manage to get our act together. Just imagine all of the nations, China, India, Russia, Brazil, the United States, they all come together and they decide to sign a legally binding agreement and to follow through. And by 2030, the whole planet is run by renewable energies and is carbon neutral. Just imagine it solar panels, wind turbines, everybody going around in electric vehicles. It would be like a dream come true. We would have fixed climate change, zero emissions. Actually, no, it wouldn't fix the problem. Reducing emissions to zero and going to a fully sustainable, renewable energy future, which is something that we should do, is not going to address the underlying problem. We have released too much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and so we have to find a way to reverse the process, to take back that carbon and put it into the earth. This is called carbon capturing. Then there is this lever, the amount of light, the sunlight that comes in and that bounces back into space, which is called the reflectivity of the earth or the albedo. Now, changing the albedo is called solar radiation management, and both of them are examples of climate geoengineering when applied to a planetary scale. Controlling these two knobs and finding the right balance is the key to fixing climate change. Now, that's the theory. In practice, things are complicated. Thank you for watching. This was the first part on a documentary series that I'm preparing on climate change and geoengineering. We live in a time where science is under attack and there's no worse time than this. And if you've been following this channel for a while, I think you've noticed how much I care about climate change and fixing it. Because I think it's kind of the defining issue of our generation, of our time. It's the one that will determine who we are. Our grandparents' generation was determined by how they responded to the Second World War, and our parents, how they responded to the possibility of nuclear annihilation. And for us, it's climate change. And in each of these, you can't get it wrong. So we have to step up. We have to take it seriously. And I'm, I'm putting so much energy into it because I think it is the defining issue of our generation and I'm trying to do my part. I hope you will too, I hope you share this video, I hope you share my concerns and you try to get involved and to do something about it. Thank you also to the Google Making and Science team for believing in me and for supporting this and other great projects, which are part of the Science Schools Initiative, which seeks to encourage young people and people of all ages to fall in love with science, the scientific method and the natural world. Also for giving me complete creative and editorial freedom. Thank you for watching and thank you for being curious.